G'day Mathletes, welcome back to McGrathematics for a new video. Today we're looking at some revision HSC questions for the rates and ratios topic in Standard 2 Mathematics. Uh, starting off with some easier band 3 questions and then working our way up towards some challenging band 5 6s. Uh, the way to get the best value from this video is to uh, pause the video when the question comes up, have a go yourself and then um, follow through with my solution and see if I match yours or if I try a different method or if you get stuck you can see how I solved the problem. Let's, uh, let's get right into it. Start off with a band three question from the 2016 HSC involving fuel rates. We've got a car that uh, uses 5.9 liters per 100 Ks in the country and then 7.3 liters per 100 Ks in the city. Uh, a trip, we have 170 Ks in the country and 25 Ks in the city. We're gonna find the amount of fuel she used for this trip for two marks as a band three. Okay, so let's first um, find our country liters and then we'll find our city liters and we'll add them together to get two marks. So in the country, we are using 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers. However, we aren't traveling 100 kilometers, we're traveling 170 kilometers. Okay, so we set up our fractions and we say, all right, what is happening to 100 that turns it into 170? Uh, this is being multiplied by 1.7. And if you can't see that, you just do 170 divided by 100 and your calculator will tell you 1.7. So we found the multiplying factor for the denominators, 100 times 1.7 gets you 170. Because these fractions are equivalent, we just need to multiply the top by 1.7 as well. And 5.9 times 1.7 is 10.03. So that's how many liters we are using in the country. Let's look at the city. For the city, our fuel rate is a bit higher because we are stopping and starting and accelerating more. So we're using 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers. In the city, we are driving 25 kilometers. So we just need to figure out how 100 is becoming 25 and we'll do the same thing to 7.3. So 25 is a quarter of 100. So to get from 100 to 25, we're multiplying by a quarter or 0.25. Okay, or you can think of it as we're dividing by four. Either way, we get from 100 to 25. That's what's happening on the bottom. Let's do the same thing on the top. Let's do 7.3 multiplied by 0.25 or divided by four if you prefer. Either way, you get 1.825 liters. So this much in the city, this much in the country to get our final answer, we just need to add those two together to get our total fuel, which works out to be 11.855 liters for two marks. Hopefully you got the same. Okay, up next, another band three from the very recent 2022 HSE exam. We've got what is 20 minutes to one third of a day expressed as a ratio in simplest form. Okay, so to express a ratio, both of our parts need to be in the same units. So we've got 20 minutes on the left, now we just need to figure out how many minutes there are in one third of a day. Then we can set up our ratio and then simplify it and hopefully we get one of these four answers. Okay, so if we're gonna find a third of a day, we're gonna take 24 hours and we're gonna divide it by three, which is eight hours. Now we know that there is 60 minutes in every hour. So if we do eight lots of 60, we get how many minutes there are in eight hours, which works out to be 480. So our ratio of 20 minutes to one third of a day is really 20 minutes to 480 minutes. Okay, so we set 20 to 480 as our ratio. Now we're gonna simplify this. Of course, you can just chuck this into the calculator and type 20 over 480 and it'll give you the numbers. But let's say you've got your calculator. Let's take a zero off both sides. So we get two to 48, cut them both in half and we get one to 24, which is option B. So again, if you type into your calculator 20 over 480, the fraction it will give you is one over 24. And that's how we know B is the answer. So you can take a bit of a shortcut when you're simplifying ratios if you have a calculator. Okay, stepping up to some band fours now. This one's from the 2018 HSC involving um, power consumption. So we've got a 1200 watt microwave uh, being used for 45 minutes at 40% power. Uh, 25 cents per kilowatt hour, we're gonna find the cost for running for 180 days. All right, so let's approach this intelligently and sort of work backwards. We need to find how much money we're spending, which means we need to know how many kilowatt hours we're using which means we need to know our kilowatts and we need to know our hours so we can multiply them together. Oh, I got an email. Okay, um, slight trick to this question is that if you read carefully, even though we have 1200 watts, the microwave only uses 40% power. So we're not actually gonna use 1200 watts, we're gonna use 40% of 1200 watts, which works out to be 480 watts. Now for these calculations, we're not trying to find watt hours, we're trying to find kilowatt hours. So to uh, transfer from watts to kilowatts, you want to divide this by a thousand because there is a thousand watts in a kilowatt. So 480 divided by a thousand is 0.48. That's how many kilowatts we're using every time you turn this, um, this microwave on. 
Now we need to multiply it by how many hours we're using it for. So 45 minutes, we can think of that as three quarters of an hour. Okay, so if you can't see that, you can just do 45 divided by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. Either way, you get either three quarters or 0 0.75, and that's how many hours we're using it for each day. So if we multiply our kilowatts by our hours, we get kilowatt hours, okay? Kilowatts times hours. 0 0.48 times 0 0.75 is 0 0.36. That's how many kilowatt hours we're using every day that we use this microwave for 45 minutes. Question specifies we're using this for 180 days, so we'll take our power consumption, that's our daily figure, we're gonna multiply this by 180, and we get 64.8 as our total kilowatt hours. Now to finish it off, every kilowatt hour costs us a quarter of a dollar or 25 cents. So we just need to multiply 64.8 by 0 0.25 dollars and that works out to be 16 dollars and 20 cents. So if you got 16.20 by yourself, that will get you three marks for a band four question from 2018 HSC paper. Okay, up next we have another band four, um, again from the recent 2022 HSC exam. This is a capture recapture question, which are typically um, either band four or five, because people get confused. We've got estimating number of fish in a lake. We capture 30 fish, we tag them, we release them. We come back later and we capture 40, and out of those 40, we see that 12 of them have our original tag, so they're from the original 30. Using these figures, estimate the total number of fish in the lake. Okay, so capture recapture questions are always very straightforward if you know how to set up your fractions of tagged out of total. All right, that's my approach. I'm gonna try and get two fractions with tagged fish out of total fish. One of the fractions will be the population of the entire lake, and the other one will be the population of just the sample from the second week. Okay, so for our population, we have a total of unknown. I'm just gonna call it P for population, but the total number of tagged fish is the 30 that we captured in the original, um, you know, thingo. All right, for our second pick, we captured 40 and had 12 of them being tagged. So our tagged out of total is 12 out of 40. Okay, now this is the equation we're trying to solve for P. There's a few ways you can do it. The way I like to figure out is just um, figure out what number is multiplying and then apply the same process. So if I can figure out how 12 is turning into 30, I can apply the same scale factor to 40 and it gets me P. Okay, 12 turning into 30 isn't super straightforward, so you can just work backwards and do 30 divided by 12, and you get 2.5. That means if you take 12 and you multiply it by 2.5, you get 30. So all we need to do is take the bottom number, the 40, multiply this by 2.5 as well, and then we get our total population. So 40 times two and a half gets us 100. So if you were going for option D, you got a correct one mark, well done. Okay, up next, we're into the spicy section up to the band fives. This one's from 2019. It was towards the back end of the paper, um, so it's pretty challenging. We've got a map drawn with a scale of one centimeter. Um, sorry, this is a one centimeter grid paper, okay? Cinema, supermarket, reservoir. It takes 10 minutes to walk in a straight line from the cinema to the supermarket, like that, at a constant speed of three kilometers per hour. Show that the scale of the map is one centimeter equals 100 meters. So we're trying to show that each of these little gaps is equal to 100 meters. So the best way to show that is to show the distance between the cinema and the supermarket is 500 meters, and then that will be applying our scale correctly. So we're trying to show that this distance is 500 meters. Okay, we have a speed and we're trying to find a distance. So we know our speed equation is speed equals distance over time. If we rearrange this by multiplying the T across, we get the distance is equal to speed times time. Okay, so we're gonna take our speed, multiply it by our time. Slight trick to this question is that our speed is in kilometers per hour, but our time is not in hours, our time is in minutes. For your calculations, your speed and your time need to be in the same units so that you get a correct answer. So converting three kilometers per hour is gonna be tricky. It's easier to convert 10 minutes into number of hours. Okay, so we say to ourselves 10 minutes, well that 10 goes into 66 times, so 10 minutes must be one sixth of an hour. So for our calculation, for time, we're not gonna use 10, we're gonna use 1 6 because we wanna do kilometers per hour times hours to get kilometers as our answer. Okay, so our speed calculation, three kilometers per hour times 1 6 of an hour works out to be 0 0.5, okay, 0 0.5 kilometers. And what do you know, 0 0.5 kilometers is 500 meters. So we've got that five centimeters on the map uh, in real life using our calculations is 0 0.5 kilometers. Half a kilometer is 500 meters, so we have five centimeters is 500 meters, therefore one centimeter is equal to 100 meters as we were required to show. Okay, so you have to be careful with questions that say show that because you have to have actual full working out to get the full marks because you're trying to convince your marker 
that you understand what you're talking about. You can't just have a correct answer. You've got to have a proof or a, or a method, okay? So if you say show that, be careful. Show as much working as you can. That's my recommendation. <clears throat> okay, that's part A. For part B, another three marks. We've got um, the reservoir is initially empty um, and then 20 millimeters of rain falls on top of the reservoir. We're gonna use the trapezoidal rule to estimate how much water um, falls into the reservoir and all the, res all the rain that falls is stored. We're trying to find how much water in cubic meters and we're using the fact from part A, we proved that one centimeter on the map is 100 meters in real life. So to find the volume of water, we need to find the area of the reservoir. And the question says use trapezoidal rule, so we will. We'll find the area, we'll multiply it by the height of the rain and that'll get us the volume of the water. So first things first, we're gonna turn this reservoir into a trapezium because that's what the trapezoidal rule is. It's just an approximation, which is pretty good. We get the area formula for a trapezium off our reference sheet, if you've forgotten it, which looks like this. A and B are your two flat sides, which are here and here and H is how far apart they are, which is this. Okay, so don't think H is the height of the trapezium. H is just how far apart your two parallel sides are, which are A and B. Okay, so we've got one centimeter here, so that must be 100 meters in real life. That's our A. Our B is three centimeters on the map, so it's 300 meters in real life, and our height is 400 meters. Okay, we wanna convert these lengths into meters because we don't wanna convert our area. It's always easier to convert lengths rather than areas. So these are our three figures for the trapezoidal rule. Let's sum them in. So 400 over two multiplied by 100 plus 300. This works out to be an answer of 80,000 square meters as our approximation for the area. Okay, so there's our area. Now we just multiply it by the height of the rain and that gets us a volume. The issue here is that our area is in square meters and our rain is in millimeters. And once again, like last time, when you're multiplying, you need to be in the same units. So the challenge here is to convert 20 millimeters into a number of meters. So we can do meters times square meters to get us cubic meters. Okay, so we're doing volume is area times height. For our height, we're going to divide it by a thousand and pretend that bracket is red for me. Okay, because in every meter, there is a thousand millimeters, just like you know how in every liter, there's a thousand milliliters. Milli means a thousand. So we take 20, we divide it by a thousand and we get 0 0.02 meters. That is the height of the water falling on this reservoir. So if we take our area from before, we multiply it by 0 0.02, that's base area times height, that gets us the volume of the prism of water falling onto this thing. 80,000 times 0 0.02 works out to be 1600 cubic meters, and that's how we're gonna leave our answer. We're not gonna convert it into liters because the question said, give your answer in cubic meters. 1600 gets you three marks in this band five question from 2019, so well done if you got the same number. Okay, another band five question from the 2012 HSC exam. This one's pretty challenging. We've got um, a flagpole, four meters tall, casting a shadow. Um, we have a man, 1.5 meters tall, casting a shadow of length D. Now the man and the flagpole are three meters apart. We're gonna use similar figures or similar triangles to try and find the value of D um, to some decimal place. Okay, pause the video, have a go. This one's pretty challenging though. It's a pretty high level band five, close to band six in my, in my opinion. Okay, so what we've got here is two triangles that we're working with. This one here, 1.5 and D for distance. And the bigger triangle has a height of four and the base length is actually gonna be three plus D. Okay, the total length of the blue triangle's base is three plus D. So this question's a bit easier if you separate those two triangles out like this. So we've got 1.5 height distance, we've got four height and we have three plus distance. Now, because these two angles are the same thing, and because they're both right angles, we have the same shape, so we have similar triangles. What we can do now is figure out the scale factor from the smaller triangle to the bigger triangle, and then apply this to make an equation to solve for D. So the question now is how is 1.5 becoming four? I'm not too good with my 1.5 times table, so I'm gonna be clever, I'm gonna work backwards. I'm gonna do four divided by 1.5. You can get a gross decimal from your calculator. We're gonna keep it as a nice fraction and write eight out of three. What that means is if you take this triangle and you multiply any lengths by eight over three, it turns them into this big blue triangle. So here's how we make our equation. We say, all right, cool. If I take this distance here and I multiply it by the scale factor of eight thirds, this turns it into the longer length, which is three plus D. Okay, so we've found our scale factor, we've made an equation, and now to get three marks, we need to solve this equation for D. So that's what we'll do now. So eight thirds times D is just gonna be eight D over three, okay? When you have a whole thing, a whole number, multiplying by a fraction, it just multiplies to the top. 
Now to solve this equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of the divided by 3 on the left. Don't forget to multiply the entire right-hand side by 3, that's why I'm using brackets. So those 3's cancel out. If we expand out the right-hand side, we get 8d on the left. On the right, we get 9 plus 3d. Okay, now to solve this, we're going to take away 3d from both sides of the equation, so that vanishes, and then 8d becomes 5d. Okay, so taking away 3d off both sides. Now just divide both sides by 9, and you've got your final answer, that d is equal to 9 over 5. Okay, that figure there gets you 3 marks for a band 5 HSC question, so well done if you got the same number, or decimal approximations, probably something like 1.8. All right, cool. Now, moving on to our final question. Yeah, 1.8, there you go, I'm a genius. All right, last question. This is from the 2022 HSC. It is the last um, question on the exam, so I assume it's a band six. Although working through it, it's not super, super challenging, so it might be a band five. I'll have to wait until the, um, until the solutions are released. Okay, so we've got a container, 4.8 liters of mixture, and the mixture of cordial to water is a ratio of one to three. It's a pretty solid ratio. We're going to remove 1.2 litres of the mixture, so we're going to tip out 1.2 litres, and then we're going to add more water to fill it back up to 4.8 litres. After we've added the water, what is the ratio of cordial to water in the final mixture? If you're feeling confident, pause the video, have a crack, and then see how far through you get. Okay, so the trick here is not to split up 4.8 litres into a 1 to 3 ratio, because we're not actually looking at this number yet. We're looking at 4.8, and then we're taking away 1.2. So after we've poured out 1.2 litres of the mixture, we have 3.6 litres left of um, water and cordial. So let's figure out how much water and how much cordial is in our 3.6 litre um, concoction. So we're splitting it up in a one to three ratio. So we're splitting up four parts, one on the left and three on the right. So we'll do 3.6 and we'll divide it by four. 3.6 divided by four works out to be 0 0.9. That means there's one part of 0 0.9 and that's your cordial and there's three parts of 0 0.9, and that's your water. So we have 0 0.9 liters of cordial, and then three times 0 0.9 is 2.7. So out of our 3.6 liter mixture, we've got 0.9 liters of cordial and 2.7 liters of water. Now, what we're doing is we're filling back up the uh, mixture with water. So we're adding in 1.2 more liters of water to bring it back up to the original 4.8 liters. Okay, so after we add 1.2 litres of water, our 2.7 litres of water is now going to become 3.9 litres of water. Okay, so we'll get our 3.6, we figure out how much of that 3.6 is water, and we add 1.2 to it because we're filling the thing back up. Okay, so we've got 0 0.9 litres of cordial and 3.9 litres of water. Let's find out what ratio that is. So we have 0 0.9 to 3.9. We can multiply both of these by 10, and we get 9 to 39. These numbers both have a common factor of three, so we'll divide them by three and we'll get three to 13. And that is the correct answer for the last question of this year's HSC exam, three to 13. Well done if you got it, that's the last question for today. Um, thanks for watching if you made it all the way through. I'm hoping to make one of these videos for every topic in the standard maths year 12 course this year, but we'll see how we go. Cool, thank you for watching. Hopefully see you in the next video. Bye for now.